folks, Craig here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the RDP Retro Duo Portable from Retrobit. This is version 2. Uh, there are two versions. The second one is basically the same thing with just some slightly better hardware. Now this is a clone system. Uh, some of you may already be familiar with them, but clone systems are machines that uh, have guts similar to a Nintendo, similar to a Genesis, similar to a Super Nintendo, similar to these older systems, uh, but not quite. They're usually a little bit off because they're reverse engineered. Uh, but because the hardware is so similar, they can uh, play your original Nintendo or Super Nintendo cartridges. There are some benefits to this. There are also some drawbacks. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But this particular clone machine uh, is portable, which is uh, not common, but there's more and more of these these days. Hyperkin has the Superboy which plays uh, Super Nintendo cartridges portably. The RDP here plays um, NES and SNES out of the box. You can also purchase a separate adapter called uh, the Retro Gen, which pops right in, and you can use this to play Genesis or Mega Drive games. Actually, the whole thing is actually region free, so this adapter will play Genesis, Mega Drive from Europe and Japan. This will also play Super Nintendo and Super Famicom. It will not play Famicom games, though. It will play NES. It only supports this cartridge type and will not support the smaller Famicom cartridges, so that's unfortunate, but it is otherwise uh, region free, which is one of the benefits to clone systems. Here you can see it compared to a 3DS XL, and then we'll get the, the Vita in the picture there, and also compared to a Vita, it is significantly thicker than any of these machines, as you can see right here, because of course it is housing uh, internals that will have to, you know, process several different systems, so uh, that's to be expected. Um, it's not very heavy though. Um, it is, with a cartridge in it, it's about as heavy as a 3DS XL. Uh, it's very comfortable, believe it or not. This is soft plastic, it's very comfortable to hold. Uh, these buttons, we have Y, X, B, A, uh, with um, actually Super Nintendo colors from uh, Japan. I believe Europe also had these colors as well, these sort of Skittles colors here. We didn't get these here in North America. Our Super Nintendo buttons were just purple. Uh, but these are nice. Uh, these ones here are convex and these ones here are concave, as you can see right there. Just true to the Super Nintendo. And here we have a cross-shaped D-pad, which is decent, not great. It's a little bit stiffer than I prefer. It doesn't have good rocking motion, so if you're, if you're the sort of person who pushes, puts your thumb in the center of a D-pad and rocks, Eh, you may not get along with this D-pad. I'm the sort of person that does this and physically moves my thumb to the tips of the cross, and so it's it's just fine for me. We have select start down here, but they're a little too far to the center. If they were closer towards the edges of the screen here, that would have been perfect, but here, eh, not so much. Uh, this button here is marked as contrast or reset, and it's really a brightness, not really a contrast, I guess. Uh, it has uh, three or four levels of brightness, and then you can hold it down to reset as well. And then up top, we have LR shoulder buttons, which are easy to click, just fine there. Uh, it's got a good solid grip, maybe a little bit too fat for my taste, but it's actually not so bad. Uh, we got stereo speakers, LED charging indicator there, volume slider, which is very small. So you got you don't have a whole lot of nuance in terms of adjusting the volume. On this side, we have the uh, DC in for charging, um, and it's not very convenient to have it on power supply, have the power supply plugged in and play. You kind of have to adjust your hand around the plug. That's actually a really inconvenient place for that. And also the on-off switch. And on this side, we have a port where you can connect a controller adapter, so you can actually play two players right on this. Or, if you'd like, you can connect it to your TV. That's what's nice about this RDP. It's not only portable, but you can also use it as a home console. Uh, this port right here not only connects to your TV through composite, uh, it also has, uh, this is also the uh, headphone jack. And then here we have the cartridge port. Here we have the removable lithium ion battery is rechargeable battery, so that's nice. All right, well, as I'm, as I'm recording this, there's a car alarm beeping for the past like five minutes outside, so I hope you don't hear that. It's really annoying, but I really like to uh, continue with the video. Um, in the box, you also get this instruction book, which I didn't actually find. It's, it's okay. I mean, most, most home electronics don't really come with instruction booklets these days. They come with a single sheet of paper, but um, quick start guide, if you will. 
Uh, it's alright, but um, it doesn't really help in terms of like compatibility. I, I wasn't actually sure whether this was region free at first until I popped in a Super Famicom cartridge and found out this doesn't actually really tell you a whole lot in terms of usability. You do have the uh, DC adapter, and as I said, if you pop that in there, as you can see, it's not so easy uh, to play with that. I mean, that's literally like right where you need to put your hand. It's possible, it's not super comfortable though. Uh, we have here, this is a clear stand. You can prop this up. I'm not so sure why you would. There's also some screws that you use this to, to screw in the stand. I'm not really so sure about that. Uh, you have the Super Nintendo cartridge adapter. And this plugs in right there. And then here, you can plug in. You can use uh, RetroBit makes manufacturers uh, Super Nintendo controllers. Uh, but you can also use your original. They all they all work fine here. Uh, this switch turns on and off the Player One port. So if Player One wants to use the physical RDP system, you'd switch this to off, and then Player Two would plug right in there. So that's how that works. And then of course it also comes with these uh, uh, composite cables. You just plug them right in the top there, and then you can play this right there on your TV. So now I'm going to pop in a cartridge. Here I have Super Mario World. Now clone machines, clone machines like these tend not to give you the true audio visual experience of playing it on a Super Nintendo does. And it's only exacerbated by the fact on the RDP here in particular that the screen and the speakers are not top tier components obviously to drive down cost. Um, some games, like Super Mario World here, actually work pretty okay. Like, Super Mario World actually works pretty respectable. There are some games where, um, the sound or the graphics are both, eh, are not so hot. And, um, that's just compatibility. Pop the cartridge in. There's actually a bit of a wobble to it, as you can see here. It seems unnerving, but the connection is secure. I've actually jostled this around on purpose while playing, and it's never, uh, crashed my game. So, the connection is secure. Cartridges wobbly. Car Super Nintendo cartridges were not meant to be portable, so uh, that's what you're going to have to put up with. So, uh, volume's up. We're going to turn this on. So that should give you a taste of how well games that work well on a machine like this work. Um, this is actually not so bad. However, like many clone machines, uh, the RDP has trouble with games that use the Super FX chip, which is um, actually a coprocessor inserted into the cartridge of certain games here. Uh, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island uses the Super FX chip, and this game will not load um, even the title screen. So we'll just connect that up. Whereas I think there are some RDP, like, well, not RDP, uh, Retro Duo systems, like home consoles, that will run Super FX chip games. But this, in my experience, we get that. And that's the wow one. That's literally it. There's nothing else. Um, I was actually playing Star Fox. Star Fox actually worked once for me. I put in Star Fox and it worked right away. So I'm like, oh, okay, this must work with Super FX chip games could not get this to work, and then I put in Star Fox again, could not get it to work ever again. So it played Star Fox once, um, but never again, and never Yoshi's Island. So I'm going to assume maybe that was a fluke, and it just generally does not work with Super FX chip games. As I said, the RDP is region free, so here I have the Super Famicom Popful Mail. It just pops right in there. And it's not perfect. Um, it's a it's a you know mediocre screen and mediocre speakers on a clone system. But you can play your games on this if you want to hang out on the couch and play Popful Mail like I did. Uh, you can do that. It's a it's a decent alternative. Now, if you want to play NES games, this is where stuff gets a little sticky. You need this adapter. Now it comes with this adapter. This adapter is in the box, uh, but it adds comical mass to the system. So here I have Super Mario Brothers 3 and you slide it 
right in there, clicks in, and then you take this adapter, connect in the slot there, and of course this does have wobble, and um, that's how big it is. Here's my hand. It's, uh, it's pretty big. Um, it is top heavy. It's not terrible, but this is not a good way to be playing your NES games. So we'll turn it on. And you can hear that crackliness in the speaker. It doesn't it doesn't give you perfect sound. And that's that's the extent of my Mario prowess. But um, as you can hear, that's that's really not ideal. And especially with this leaning tower here, not awesome. Now, as I said, even though the RDP machine is region free and you can put in NES game, uh, Super Nintendo games from all over the world, or you can use the Retro Gen adapter to use Genesis or Mega Drive games from all over the world, NES games, it's only the North, only the North America and European cartridges, uh, Western cartridges really, uh, that have that you know this this sizable mass here that can be connected. Uh, Famicom games do not work. There's no way to connect these. This is a Famicom cartridge. This is uh, the very first Megami Tensei. Uh, this doesn't, this just falls in there. I'm not going to put it in there. Uh, it'll just de be devoured by the adapter. And um, I was hoping maybe you can just kind of slide it in here, but um, no dice. It doesn't connect. So uh, if you had hopes of playing Famicom games, that's out. Sorry. So there you have it, folks. The RDP version 2 from Retrobit. Um, uh, it does what it what it's advertised to do, and I think it does it uh, adequately. I think is the the fairest way I can put it. Um, but as with any clone machine or using a portable device to play cartridges that look like this or look like this, you're going to have some quirks. You're going to have some caveats. There are going to be some trade offs. Um, these aren't the best examples because these games are available on portable machines. But if you want to play, you know, I do have Popful Mail here. If you want to play Popful Mail on your couch or Actraiser on your couch like I was um, while watching Netflix or whatever, this will do it. Like, it's not ideal. It's not perfect. But I don't know. I, I, you know, I feel like I've gotten out of it what uh, I was told I would get out of it. Uh, these cost about, so you can get these for about $70 on Amazon. And the RetroGen adapter costs 20 or 25 so for about 100 bucks, you can play three different machines, uh, two of which region-free, portably, or hook them up to your TV. And that's really not a bad deal. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, retro collectors, a lot of us retro gamers, you know, we, have a, we have an appreciation for the original hardware. I know I do. This was just basically to goof off with, to review. Uh, this is not my primary machine, of course. But there are people where something like this is for them. My girlfriend, for instance, has a Hyperkin Retron uh, 3, and that plays like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Genesis games on one console that hooks up to your TV. For someone like her who just dug up a bunch of old cartridges from her mom's house and just wanted to play them inexpensively, that was a really that's that's a really good thing for her. You know, she doesn't have to go to yard sale. She doesn't go on eBay. Uh, she doesn't have to hook up three different systems. She doesn't need to you know have all that space. And for people like her, and those people do exist, uh, these things aren't so bad. Um, and I know that there are some retro gamers that are uh, completely opposite. No, no clones whatsoever. But I don't know. Like a machine that allows people to play classic games uh, is. You know, it's okay in my book. Like, you know, it allows people to cheaply and easily get into classic games, and I think that's a good thing. I think that's, I think overall, that's a good thing. I would always, I would always favor original hardware if possible. But if it's not possible, you know, that's that's really not a bad thing. I don't think. I think, you know, anything that gets people into classic gaming is a good thing. And being able to play portably is never going to be perfect, unless you're Ben Heck, of course. Um, but otherwise, you're going to have to put up with imperfections. And this is all right, but it's probably not for a lot of people. I can see that. But um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for watching. And until next time, you guys take it easy.